Hey folks, you may have seen a couple of my videos on off-grid lighting and RVs and converting off-grid you know, cabins and RVs and stuff over to be more efficient for uh, the solar power and what I call the poverty of power situation where running normal incandescent bulbs can really kill your, your solar power's uh, efficiency because they, they use a lot of power for the amount of light they deliver. The other thing that happens with normal incandescent bulbs is they won't take weather changes very well. Let's say you've got an RV or a survival cabin or some off-grid type location that you don't live in full time. So you're not heating and cooling it. You're not regulating the temperature. The little filaments can become brittle. And then you get there and you find out your lights just aren't going to last very long. So when we look at trying to be more efficient with this stuff, we really want to look at LEDs. And up to now, um, you know, there hasn't been a whole lot for dedicated LED fixtures available on the common market that are uh, DC only. You know, usually it's something that's plugged in a wall, kind of like this. Well, over at IKEA, they, they have a lot of LED stuff that a lot of times gets incorporated into the, uh, the cabinets and stuff that they do. And it's usually pretty budget priced and pretty decent. I just finished up doing a uh, entertainment center installation for somebody where it had some LED lighting. I got to looking at it a little more carefully and I realized that all of their stuff, or a whole lot of it, is 12 volt. And on some of the fixtures, they do the AC to DC conversion in a little external box that is in line on the cord. And I think one of the reasons they were doing that is because they have some of it for the U.S. and Mexico and Canada market that has R-style plugs. And then for their domestic uh, European market, they run a little bit different housing here and, of course, a different plug. But everything downrange of it, uh, all of the switches and plugs and everything down, down line on that is their stuff. Well, so here's what you want to look for on this. So this is the one they call the Leadbird. It's kind of a, like a little put-together system. You want to find the ones that have a box like this. And as long as it says DC out is 12 volt, this is something you can work with on your off-grid and RV stuff. Now, on one of the problems you're going to run into with some models and not others is figuring out, well, where's your positive and where's your negative? Because we are going to be splicing into the cables. The only tool that you should need to use on this is a Leatherman tool. Okay, there's nothing else needed. There's uh, a couple of screws that were on the back of this. I had to pry the housing a little bit to separate the clamshell off. And what we have here is basically a little voltage converter. Uh, AC comes in on one side, goes through this stuff, changes over to DC, and then part of this, it, it limits the amount of wattage that's going to go through. I believe it limits it at 5 watts. Now, these little three strips of LEDs, as they get connected together, actually can use more than 5 watts. I'm sorry, they would use less than 5 watts, but what you can do is you can daisy chain a few of these sets off of the same plug. And on some of the LED lights they sell, they don't even have this section of the plug included on that light. You, you actually daisy chain these boxes with a different little cord that goes between those. Some of them do not have one of these boxes in line on the cord. If they don't have one of these in boxes in line on the cord, then the conversion process that's done with this little bit of electronics is inside the light housing. If you're doing the off-grid stuff, those are the ones you do not want to mess with. We need to mess with the ones where the conversion box is basically in line on the cord and then um, the switch is down line of the conversion box because this is actually a, it's a DC switch. Yeah, all ready to go. It's all there. It's been Basically, these things convert the AC to DC, but we're going to be using this as DC only. One of the big questions when you're cutting or dealing with this kind of stuff is, well, where's your polarity on the cord here? Well, the way this particular one got installed, and a really cool thing is, and it may not come through on the camera that well, but the circuit board, the components of the circuit board are labeled in English. Uh, so when I look at where the wires connected here, there's a little thing. I know it's kind of hard to come through on a camera. We see the letters G N D. That means that's the ground. And then on the other one, on the on the top, it says 12 V. And then I think there's a little plus sign. 
So basically that's the voltage and this is the ground right on the lower section. When I look at the cord, there's, and, and again, it's going to be a little tricky to come through on a camera, but I think you can see it. There's writing on one of these two lines, and the other line is blank. The one with the writing is the positive. The one with the writing on it is a positive. So what I do is I clip a roo back here. I still want to, might want to use this little conversion thing. So um, I'm going to clip a roo right here. Um, because I, I think I want to save the rest of this box. And then I'm going to uh, splice out these wires. We're going to test it on a battery and uh, show you how this thing works. Okay, so we clipped off the transformer and a plug. We clip it off down line of the transformer because basically on this side down, it's 12 volt stuff, right? Fortunately, our power switch is up a down line of that too. So minimal modification, I've just hooked up to a battery here for demonstration purposes. I could either hardwire this into the RV or the, the, the trailer or the camper or whatever. You can hardwire this in or you could put a cigarette lighter plug on it or whatever other type of plugs you're using for 12 volt. You can look at my other videos on how to use AC style plugs with that. I, I prefer to use a three prong so that there's less of a possibility of making a mistake and flipping it upside down and having a polarity problem. But because I switch is down line of this, and you can see that's just a standard IKEA pro product. Um, we turn this on, we've got light, and of course I can, I can link these things together. Uh, they're a little bit on the flimsy side. I, I, you don't want this for exterior lighting at all. But it, it's a good way of adding lighting to a situation when your, your, your options are a uh, DC stuff. And remember, whenever you're converting anything from DC, AC, either way, you, you lose power in the conversion process. And that's what we're trying to avoid, especially when we're on a solar power situation and, there, and there's a poverty of power, that I call it, or if you're trying to run on batteries. If you're trying to run off of a running vehicle, it may not matter. Uh, you, you've got the inverter. If you're running on the grid, it doesn't matter. Just, just set these things up the way the instructions say. But the thing is, when you're trying to utilize your off-grid power to maximum efficiency, you want to shorten the wire runs. If it's a 12-volt DC device, just clip off all this conversion crap and go straight 12-volt. You just got to make sure your, your polarity was right when you're putting it together. But these IKEA lights, really good option for that.